can't say up, guys. I love everything. Yeah. Such a cool, such a cool concept. And mm. um, you know what? How mad is this, right? I was at the platform and obviously me and this guy, I was like, you went in for this fast train too? That is not very fast. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I am. And uh, I said, I'm just gutted. I'm going to film a podcast, but it's cool. It all's still working out. And he was like, oh, me too. Oh, is it? I was like, how weird is that? And he yeah. was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was quite cool actually. Like he owns a marketing company for fostering. Cool. So they're trying to bring yeah. awareness to it, and they've just started a podcast on so it. So did you two connect? Like not really, no. But it was just a lovely conversation. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I felt like yeah, but we were chatting away. So that's yeah, cool. yeah. I mean, you could have connected and maybe just you know like done done a bit of podcasting here and there as well. Yeah, I yeah. think um, for him, they're just the. I mean, they're focused fully on what they do. He works mm. as a sales agent for the marketing agency i think yeah, yeah. for fostering but yeah he was like we just we're trying to raise awareness we just don't know if it will work very well and i was like no i've yeah, been yeah. brilliant so yeah laura look um it's amazing to have you here Thank um you, mate. purely just because here. like obviously we've connected prior you know through through the platform that we spoke on um and then we had a call actually i wish we recorded the call because that was like a podcast material call anyways in itself yeah. But and that's what I realised. Podcast is just a conversation, isn't it? Hundred percent. And and the other thing I was thinking about as well the other day. So when people talk about negotiating, when people negotiate, negotiating is also a conversation. So most of the things that take place in life is conversation. Hundred percent. And it's that thing just of like label it, don't we? It's yeah, like yeah. you know what else is interesting that I've really worked for and unpacked because it wasn't so comfortable to me. Mm. Another thing that is just a conversation is confrontation. Mm. People really struggle with it. And sometimes it's internal as well, right? They confront themselves internally in terms of 100%. what values. And put. then actually the vulnerability of confrontation with going into something with someone, you know, because yeah. I, 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 I really walk through the world like emotionally, but I have a very analytical mind. Mm -hmm. So, and I am like quite confident in the forefront, but everything is programmed emotionally. So I really struggled with confrontation. Mm. Because it just that's a very chaotic thing for an um, for emotions, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you don't yeah. know what that's how that response is going to go. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so it's interesting because I've really had to work on that and get more comfortable in it. But it hundred percent is, you know. Again, uh, the biggest thing for me unpacking that and learning that and passing it on is it's just a conversation. Yeah. You know, nobody needs to be angry. No one needs to win. No one needs to lose. Like, and I think that's the biggest thing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, conversation are powerful. Is that thing of um. I've learned this from Bob and, and it's a beautiful thing of like describing a conversation, a powerful conversation. So the, the only reason I exist is because my parents had a conversation at one point, you know, that's how, you know, it's just, and, and I think there's different types of conversation we can have in the world. And obviously the whole point of this yeah. podcast is to have a meaningful conversation. We were talking about emotions a little bit. Um, and someone was telling me the other day that actually emotions are coming from logic, which was, it made me think about it in a different kind of way. So that actually emotions are obviously the emotions in itself, but it's created by logic, which was as, it's, it doesn't yeah, sound that, correct. No, it's but, interesting. I was just, yeah. I'm just pausing. I was just processing it. Yeah, it's interesting. I am, um, yeah, I wonder how much our emotions come from well our emotions often come from our existence doesn't it and it's what everything we've been through everything yeah. we've ever seen ever felt because you'll be highly connected to different emotions more than others mm. um but also i think it's interesting because we all normalize emotions in a different way so it's like fear to you could feel different to me and yeah. then there is the physical element of that isn't it when we put our body into a stress response and and so and, and that does its magic to kind of like in the neuro system it's that's within itself a response but yeah. absolutely like and i think you're right i think you know what's so lovely about what you guys are doing and why i was so grateful to this today is that the more we can have conversation the more we can understand one another better yeah. um and really like talk about things you know what i mean which process and processes emotion yeah, yeah what's it what's your take on freedom of speech because i've had an interesting conversation about that recently and yeah i'll, I'll tell you what my thing is afterwards but i wanted to ask you what you think yeah. about that do you know what Leah? it's a weird one isn't it because i i'm all around people being their most authentic self mm. i've also learned a lot in the last few years around how we all walk in we all get placed into this world yeah, yeah. with a different privilege and so sometimes I do believe that with the game of freedom of speech, it's a fine line because yeah. 
I don't know what it's like to walk and to live as a black man or mm. black woman mm. or a gay person, um, you know, a transgender person. And I think we have to just be very just aware yeah, of yeah. one another if we truly want to walk in a space where we're allowing people to also feel like they're heard and they can be seen and they can be safe i think that's what it comes back down to it's not about opinions at that point it's about safety yeah. because the reality of it is some people haven't been given the safety um through systemic oppression do you mm. know what i mean and like we're still working through that as a and there's nation. not enough of those conversations as well like taking place too exactly so it's like so i would come back to you and say whose version of freedom of speech is it mm, that's interesting just going back to the previous point as well i just wanted to touch on something too um so my new philosophy with all of that is that i don't i might not understand but i stand so there's a nice. difference i might not understand but i stand so i i, I, I support it yeah 100%. because I, I feel like it's that thing of like sometimes i might not be able to relate to the experience fully but I'll, I'll still stand with their experience. You know? And that's it. I think yeah. it's just us having more humility every day to listen, mm. to just listen. And it's so funny, isn't it? Because it's like, it feels like it's a skill that's quite easy to do. But actually, are you just waiting for your turn to talk? Yeah. Or are you actually listening? Mm. You know, when you don't have any understanding of trying to find any way of like figuring out what they're saying or trying to find any experience from yourself from your own own being to try and relate to that person mm. like if there's nothing inside of you can you still have the humility to just listen yeah, yeah. and to just accept and give them space to be seen and heard and not gaslight them you know i feel like mm. we often as human beings want to try and find logical answer and logical pattern and stuff and we might just never be able to have that for some but for a life we've never lived yeah that's that's Aladdin. Can you can you check when gaslighting term came out? Because that's the term I've been I've been hearing a lot recently. So I'm just I like to check the history of something. Yeah, no, I love that. There. And um, I wonder where that come from. Yeah, because like it's gaslighting. And um, so going back to the freedom of speech, I have a slightly unpopular opinion. Um, I think most people won't agree with me, but I'm a true believer in like full freedom of speech. So even if people say the craziest shit ever. I think they should still be entitled to say it, even yeah. though as, hurtf as hurtful as it might sound. Because the reason being is because it's like if we suppress them, their ability to say that, it doesn't fix the issue. It doesn't solve the problem yeah. because they'll walk around and they'll feel like what they want to say. They just won't say it. Yeah. So I think the moment they're able to say it and they can feel like they're safe to say the maddest shit ever, which I don't still condone, but then at least it opens a conversation and a dialogue around potentially changing that person's perspective. 100%, you know, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think it's the fine line of us understanding the difference between shaming and blaming. Mm. So it's like, if you said something that was quite shameful towards, and uh, sorry, if you said something in your freedom of speech that you feel passionate about, but it's actually quite oppressive or it's quite, um, it's quite rude towards somebody else, like mm. derogatory towards somebody else's existence, a bit like, right, it was really weird. It was like that whole thing, I don't know if you were aware of it or when it all happened, that, Molly May was in an interview and she oh, said, yeah, 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 everyone's yeah. got the same 24 hours. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. as a white woman with privilege of whiteness and skinny privilege and pretty privilege, it's the very hard thing because it's invisible. You almost don't know what it's like to not have it because you are, you are, you're not the oppressed. You, yeah, 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 you, you yeah, come yeah. from the space of the oppressor. So I feel like in that moment, in her heart, she didn't mean any intention mm. to give anybody, you know, to f make anybody feel anything other than passionate and inspired. Yeah, she she was coming from a point of empowerment, right? A hundred percent. But the problem is, is that it's, 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 the, the problem is who said it. In so the, I, I think I think the main issue people had, I think the main problem, at least from what the conversations I had, is I think the main issue is like not about it wasn't about what she said, it's about who said it, which is uh, exactly yeah. you're right. And this is the thing she holds that privilege. So it's like for instance, and then this is just the game. But then it, the thing is, is like what you just said, there would be no point in us then shaming her. Yeah, because yeah. Because the thing is, is that she wasn't coming from a place of malice or being malicious, but she should be accountable. And that's mm. the thing where I think we should be blaming and yeah. then re-educating and giving space. Because just have a conversation with her, yeah, right? Have around, a, around it, the you know, rather, rather than going, oh, let's cancel because uh, I think 100%. the cancel thing does not serve cancel, anything. No, it's just it's it's so annoying. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. guess what? We're going around the same circles of oppression again. 
the same bullshit. Yeah. Like it will be another. We're trying to hold power. Like nobody knows better than others, mm-hmm. but we all have our own experiences, and we all have the ability to be identified yeah. and to have that space to feel that you know, all all of our existences are heard. And I think that's where it was a fine line. And that's why I think it's sad because, you know, like, guess what happens when we cancel it? It Like, shame. People then go in. They don't know what they've done. They don't know why they've Mm. done it. They just know that they're upset people. Then she comes back a few weeks later and says, she's like, she's sorry. But she doesn't really know what she's sorry for. She doesn't really. She hasn't really learned. She's not learned. It's just more about, it's just more about she's facing some of the consequences. So, and then she's basically having the behavior of like what happens when there's a consequence. You say sorry, you know. So she's doing she's doing that whole process like automatically 100%. rather than yeah, yeah. You know, and if there was space for a white woman to say to her, look, you know, like we we don't know what is like we do hold privilege and um, and this is the thing, you know, it's like it's just we just have to break it down to everyday life. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. as a pretty girl, guess what? You'll probably like be liked in most places. Mm. You'll you'll probably get a cue jump in most places. You'll probably get, you know, like free drink in or some like, places. Or even get a job somewhere. So it's things like that. A hundred percent we can like take it down further. You got a Western mm. surname. Guess what? You're probably gonna be like, you know, have more opportunities. You're and it is that. But when you are that, how do you know any different? Yeah. So it's having that accountability. What, what do you listen. think? So what do you think is more important? Do you think accountability to, for what people say or maybe resilience for how people take it? What do you think is more important? First one. Yeah. Yeah, I do, you know, because I feel like the ladder of oppression. So you're saying like if the first one down. didn't happen, then the second one the second one won't need to happen then. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's an know. interesting point. And I don't think it's about, it's, it's not getting over, it's not everybody, anybody getting up a ladder more than mm. others. It's just people being seen and heard for the and first time. And just people, time. just human human beings being able to be human beings, 100%. right? Regard, regardless of the skin colour, the background and... 100%. Their accent and all of these that's different it. things, the you name, know, yeah. You know, that's exactly it. Like, we've normalised, like, oppressive behaviour for so long that mm. people feel like they couldn't speak up. Yeah, people yeah, feel yeah. like they just took it, you know, like as a woman in business, you know, you, you just kind of code in spaces. Yeah. You know, if, if you were around 10 men, you just knew that, you know, that I can't be, have a forefront of emotion here. I won't be yeah. taken seriously. Yeah. You know, like, because, because we have been in scenarios where that happens, you know, and it just goes back to the old, the old, and, and like, of course we're always evolving, but it does go back into that internal bias as like, mm. you'd see a director that was a male in an office or a CEO and he had pictures of his kids on the wall and he was seen as like um, emotional and um, and almost like um, accepting and oh, what's the word? Like, like as in approachable. Mm. Whereas if you, like if a woman was in that position, we'd be seen as like, weak and emotional yeah that's yes. interesting so so there's one thing so it's definitely shifting so by accident i ended up reading a book on confidence and it was on confidence for women um but there's some interesting things that i've learned in there one of them was that was actually that there's a difference between so so i think i can't remember the percentages now and i can look it up later on or people can look up that are listening anyways but so in in, in fortune 500 I think at the time of the book, it was. I think it was written. It was like maybe two percent of them were female. So like, imagine like the rest of them are just male. But I think now it's just maybe like you can Google it. Maybe it's like seven or eight percent. So there is that kind of like slow, yeah, you know, transfer happening, which is nice. It's like it's nice to yeah. see empowerment happening and and, and all yeah. of these different things. A hundred percent. But the thing is, is I feel like where we've got like misplaced along the way. Because again, there's probably not mm. been enough honest conversations. Yeah is that feminism come through as like this whole big like our right to vote and we want to win and we want to get and and it it never was about that it was just like it's just like how black people fall against white people it's like guys we just want to be heard and we're just telling you what it's like to live our experience like Mm. we don't need anything from you we just want you to own your just want to be human like everyone else just you know that's it like you know that's it like um we're not asking for anything from you we just want a bit of compassion around Mm. some of these subjects and the thing is is that and the irony of it all is that we do, we are going full circle, you're right, and we are moving through spaces. But um, because we're having these conversations, yeah, yeah. people feel safe to have the conversations. Mm. They don't feel like they'll be shut down, gaslit. They don't feel like their existence will be like warped. They, they, there's enough space now. And that is one thing that I think social media is an incredible platform for. 100%. You know. I, lo- I love social media in general. I think um, I used to be a bit skeptical about it. 
I think and a lot of it came from my kind of like thoughts of like what are people gonna think if I post this are they gonna misunderstand me and then I realized actually that's all in my head so it doesn't really matter social media is just a platform the same yeah. thing I do in real life I can do on social media there's no difference it's just yeah. on internet a hundred percent but coming back to authenticity and like um how I help people in their business and like it's either bringing them back to authenticity mm. and bringing them and finding their purpose so they can move forward and then I will teach and strategize how to monetize that with them yeah or it's just it's like unpacking this armor like Renee Brown talks a lot about armor and our vulnerability factors and being able to have that space mm. but like it's funny because like we I think sometimes we don't realize we've done it do you know what I mean in so many layers because we watch other people do it yeah. because social media is that it's like the highlight platform isn't it there isn't it's, right. and it, but it's interesting because it's like TikTok of kind of like they're shifting it because the way that that's working the way that is kind of celebrated I honestly believe what happened right this is what's so funny I believe human beings of an older generation went over and started on TikTok with no expectation mm. to show up and be shiny because they thought you know what this is just full of fucking kids yeah. no one's going to be watching do you know what I mean so they were like sod it moaning on there being themselves on there filming shit weird shit like a day in a life but, to be the inner child as well you know that's like that's, that's not going nowhere because there was yeah. no armour they were just being and, and guess what we we all connect to that because we all actually strive to just be that and feel we want to do that too yeah, yeah. and then I think that's why that platform's done so incredibly well because it was it really like stripped out authenticity by accident do you know what I mean and then I was watching this thing the other day and I didn't realize that actually now that it's tipped that the population of TikTok is is actually adults more so than children yeah. like that teenage yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's very it's very possible um how do you describe authenticity or like what does it mean to you because you mentioned it a few times I'm curious. authenticity means to me when you can literally walk through the world sharp every day fully from a place of trust um your own beliefs mm. your own morals to feel a safety in that and to have enough connection of self-love yeah. to yourself to feel that you won't be um, deserted or left for being you. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I would describe it as not giving a shit. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. I love that, Leo. <laughs> I just feel yeah, like, mate. My just don't give a <laughs> shit. Do you know what? No, but it's 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 an interesting conversation because um, like I'm I've been kind of like on the journey of like freeing myself. I know it's, it's like a weird thing to say, but what I mean by no, that is just all. like I've been on the same one, mate. Yeah, just like I just like so. For instance, just being myself, not pretending to be someone else, not caring about what people think too much. And I think for me, that's where my authenticity comes from. It's like the more authentic I am with people, and even including my flaws and all of the other stuff, they're not really flaws, it's just part of who I am. But 100%. it's like I start feeling like a sense of freedom. I'm like, that's me. And it's just like, it feels so good to just be free. And it's just like, there's a sense of like, I love life Calmness, and I'm free. Yeah. Like peaceful. Yeah. Like, and this is the thing, isn't it? Like when you go on the journey, it's not, it's not, it's not easy. And I think, I think what starts to happen too, when you take that higher ground to wanting to do that, you, you have to hone and you start developing your skill set of awareness. Yeah, yeah. And then you almost not have more pressure on yourself, but you are more fully aware of your own actions. You're like, mm. did I code switch in that conversation because I was trying to impress that like girl, that man, or like was yeah, I trying yeah, to yeah, impress yeah, yeah. that? Like, you know, what was I doing there? Like, it's all right. And you it's almost like talking to like in a child, Leo, going, it's all right. You ain't got to prove anything anymore. Like, we're, yeah. we're all right. Like, and we know that if we do do that, we're presenting the version of us that isn't really us and guess what then we're going to attract yeah. the person that wouldn't really serve us anyway but you know but the funny then, thing is so, so no, I don't know, like, you, said, you said something that hit the nail on the head for me yeah you said something around impressing someone else but usually being not like being inauthentic does not impress anyone like it, it doesn't work so what i realized is like the more authentic <laughs> i became actually that's more impressive 100%. than trying to be something else yeah. like you know and, and who sets the rules it's like i was thinking about um so obviously not to say that I wouldn't do, I wouldn't be part of it, but it's just like someone was like hosting an event like on Tuesday and then everyone's guy in there dressed in suits. It's like, who set the rules? Like, oh, where yeah. did the suits come from? Like, what right. does that mean? And it's like, I was in the office like last week and then basically I was, I was tired and I'm just, I'm as human as possible. So I lie down on the floor and like one of the guys, the head of finance walking past, he's like, hey Leo, like, why are you on the floor? It's just, I'm like, who sets the rules? Like, why do you care? Why, you know, like, what does it mean to be oh, professional? No. Is, it, is it about competency? Is it about... 
not mm. lying on the floor like what is it you know you know just... what it goes back to and you know what it is it was created by capitalism and patriarchy mm. no, it's all a game of power mm. because you're right in that moment who's winning the person that holds the power to say these are the rules That's what do the rules mean yeah you know, like capitalism, why does that always work? Because it makes us, it drives us to build businesses or to build a life mm. of stuff that we believe we need mm. that is a circuit of money. Yeah. That, that, do you know what I mean? It's this so, constant flow. It's like, um, do you know what I read the other day, Leo? Like, I think, I don't quote me on this. Maybe you can Google it, lad. But I'm sure it was something like 12 billion pounds is the market for the beauty industry in this country just mm. this country alone 12 billion and that's I thought, a lot i thought that's crazy because again that is built off of patriarchy and capitalism mm. because capitalism part is the money circle part but the patriarchy part is that we were led like for a long long time to believe mm. that our only existence was to be a partner for a man do you know mm. what I mean? So there is still an internal bias as a woman that, that, that again, it's just like ridding out the poison from generations ago, but we're moving through it and we're getting there. Yeah. But women are always pinned for that. Like if you look through the Daily Mail and you look through like, even like a business woman, they, they'll tell you what she's wearing. Mm. They'll have a comment on like her clothes or like what designer she's wearing or like how she looks today. Like it's always external. It's, it's aesthetics uh. first. It's like, whereas if you had like Alan Sugar there, they ain't talking about Alan Sue. Do you know what I mean? Or whatever. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's always about that. And it's funny because I think when you, when you really think about it, Leo, all these things, it will come back to you every time because it's, it's, it's challenging the status quo isn't it yeah of course it, that is exactly what you're so, doing so what's really interesting so in terms of gender so i've had the experience of um understanding female empowerment and feminism a lot um and then i also like work with young men quite a bit as well so i've had i've had a chance to kind of see both That's sides amazing. of the coin and obviously so i'm not a woman so i can't fully understand it so you know, and i'm not going to be ignorant but at the same time, I understand quite a lot when it comes to that. But one thing I've learned about going through the whole process I used to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm pro woman and all of that stuff. And then I was like, yeah, I'm pro woman. But what I realized is that I'm not pro woman and I'm not pro man. So I'm, I don't, nice. I don't, I'm pro human. And, and my learning and my learning from that is that both genders, right? We have some similar challenges, but also there's some very, very unique challenges to each gender. Yeah. that are not the same and it's, it's not even comparable so it's just two different you know yeah. challenges and stuff and i think sometimes breaking it down in that way is way more powerful and just going no well, actually we have some similarities but there's some differences we need to empower each other on different things 100 percent, 100 percent. and i don't think we are here to be over one another mm. i don't think we're here to be um you know like put in these boxes to to have these roles we just coexist like for me, my yeah. vision is for women to exist in a world where there is no conversation or imbalance of power that was created by the patriarchal mm. capitalism. That's it. So you mentioned like you mentioned the phrase the game of power earlier. So it's like you said it's like a game of power, which also made me think about something. I think power is a perspective. Like I know it's, it's gonna sound unless it's physical, unless it's physical power, I think that's the time it's yeah. real. But I think power in general is more of a concept. So it's like more of a perspective. So like I'm in power. Like can you and if I start breaking down what power means and like what angle I'm looking from in general, it's like like are they really in power? Like am I in power? Like who's actually in power? You know what I'm trying to say? Unless it's yeah. physical, like I said, you know, if someone's yeah. like putting someone in prison, there's a there's a sense of physical power. Yeah. But in terms of mentally, it's like who's in power? So I think it's a game of perspective rather it than is. power. A hundred percent I hear you, but then I think it goes back to what are the consequences of it? Do you see mm. what I mean? Because it's like, if we just took your example of when you laid down at that point, somebody does have the power in the room that if you're in there because the exchange of you being in there in energy is that you give them the, your, your time and they give you money for a service and yeah. you're working for them, they can say you leave. They hold the power. Do you see mm. what I mean? Like you're fired. You mustn't do that. And you're going like... It, why does that offend you so much? Like I'm just laying, but see what I mean? It's like, I, I, I understand. So, but this is where I'm different. So I think the person that can say that I'm fired to me still isn't in power because I'd be, I'm in power. So even if I get fired, <laughs> Love that. I'm like, I'm still in power. 100%. Like, what does that mean? Just, you know what I'm trying to say? That's not power to me. Like to me, power is different. Nice. Do, you, do, you, do you know how to find power? Power is something that can benefit me and other people. At the same time, That's lovely. so if I'm in power, if it ben you know it's going to benefit me, but also other people will get the benefit of that power, which is that's I think that's incredible. I kind of see power. What? Sorry, I kind of see power as, as as how 
as long as you have responsibility, as long as you respond well or you have the <clears throat> ability to respond, that's when you're in power. So being fired, the action of being fired may be considered as, as, as the person that fired the person, someone else. They may be considered someone that has power, but as long as I have my own ability to respond, I'm in power. Mm. When I, when yeah, I, when yeah, I, when yeah, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. So yeah. for me, that's like, I, so I, I break that into two for me, listen to that, because I think you're right. And I love that. I love that perception because it is, it's drawing actually out the power of that whole thing. But that comes back to two things, I think. So A, self-love and self-connection, mm. because in that moment you have the ability to say, I hear you and I respect you, but I don't, I, I don't want to be a part of your um, action in and your processes and I'm out and I'm happy to be out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you take back the power. So that's why, because you have the ability to believe that the exchange of money that that's given you to live, to pay your rent or to pay your car, whatever, you don't need it because you are enough and you're bigger on your own. Mm. And I think this second thing that you said when you said about, I believe that power is something that I can be and I can learn and share with others I think that's purpose. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love what you said, and and I think with the first one as well, um, just being able to like you know love ourselves, and I, I think that's part of identity, right? Hundred percent. And it's what you said. It's like if identity is there and it's in check, it's like you know not many external things can affect us too much. Yeah. But my favorite conspiracy theory, and this is how I live, and this is what shapes my mindset. My favorite conspiracy theory in the whole world is that everything's gonna be all right. Hundred percent. That's you know that's my favorite conspiracy theory. 100%. It doesn't it doesn't get better doesn't than it that. Make you realize, right? Doesn't it make you realize that we just take this fucking game of life too seriously? Yeah, it's just like, it's just gonna be all right. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it is like we're in a simulation. Like it really is. Like I believe I do truly believe that the soul continues, and I believe the soul was here before here, and I believe that the soul is on a journey, to, yeah. and the soul is here to to have its own lessons and to to either take the journey, take the easy options, work through the ego and work through the, you know, the temptation or they work through the higher self and they work through the struggles and they see the benefits and they grow and they take that information and do greater good with it. Mm. And they give that back or they evolve what we all are together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like you either, you can take that role or the other. And I think when we take that higher ground of, um, constantly being in check with ourselves and constantly are coming back to removing the fear of what society gives us. So it's like what you said, you know, the person that feels fear that gets fired, it's because society has made them feel fear. It's made them feel mm. that they won't get, they may not be able to get a job somewhere else. They might not be able to move, but it's like when we keep unpacking and removing all these societal mm -hmm. expectations, we're actually limitless. And this, is, and this is my purpose. My purpose is to teach people that society can't make them feel like that. My, it's, it's all about empowerment that they can feel they get to choose how they feel about that, that yeah. and 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 the thing is it's like um like the whole thing of like let's say being fired right it's like they got a job in the first place and they get fired they go, oh my god i just lost my job how the fuck did you get the other job why can't you get another job again you know what yeah. i'm trying to say plus you're coming out another job which means you got experience 100%. that you didn't have prior to working that job yeah. which is also going to help them get another job anyway so it's just Absolutely. like i think i think i think it's going back to what you said i love what you said about we take life too seriously. And I think my thing is like, uh, maybe I shouldn't do it in that kind of way. Sometimes I'm a bit of a troll. So like I troll people, but just to remind them that life is not that serious, you know, just, yeah. just, just have some fun. Yeah. And people that get pissed off, they fascinate me the most because yeah. those are the people that take life way too seriously. Well, because they're triggered because they know you're right. But they, mm. they, and you know what that is, which is so interesting because um, I only learned this recently, but I learned that resentfulness so someone resents you it's a function of envy mm. so they're actually envious that you can have that mindset or that perception yeah, or take yeah. that higher ground and they can't i like that and and yeah. there's also a sense of like if people live the you know the life in, in a certain way for 30 years and then someone comes along and goes, actually it's not that it's not that difficult it's, it's simple you can do this yeah they've got like no it. I've been doing the other thing for 30 years. So you're trying to say I'm wrong. Yeah. And it's like, and I think sometimes it's more of that, but it doesn't happen consciously. I think it's just more of a subconscious thing. 100%. It all yeah. goes back to safety. The brain is wired for safety. Mm. So if you're, if you're kind of throwing them two options and one's safer than the other, the brain is always going to pick the safest one. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Whereas if we start to unwire our mindset and tap into our heart energy and tap into our belief system and rewire all the things that society's done we feel safety in making crazy decisions yeah. or making spontaneous decisions or going against the grain or questioning what actually is the consequence mm. of what you know you're weighing up or what you're putting this weight on this 
scary situation and stuff but it is interesting it's so important because the amount of people that walk around like feeling like a stress response yeah. do you know what I mean it's more it's more of a reaction I think by that point sad. Yeah. it's sad like you you can just and as well I feel like the more that you tap in with really trying to have that accountability high awareness and growth it's like you can sense people's chaotic energy when you're around them yep. do you know what so so like walking ang- anxious do you know what I mean yeah. it just actually brings sadness because you just think you don't you you don't have to live like that like life doesn't have to feel like that but then it's it's dropping the they need to be able to drop the ego yeah. and own up to themselves come out of this high achiever mode normally where they're in such a place of judgment to themselves mm-hmm. and then to the outside world and just start being vulnerable and their authentic self yeah yeah i mean i mean that's really interesting i, I feel like so i've, I've kind of I don't want to put people in labels or categories, but I've kind of I've kind of realized there's like sort of like two different categories of people in life. There's like people who might not have much money, but they might have, actually there's the people that don't have much money and they don't have mindset either. There's, so let me just be clear on that. But there's people, there's some people who have some incredible mindsets and they might not have much money, but they have really like interesting ways of looking at life. And there's people who's got money, but they don't have the other, you know, the latter. So and it's just it, it gets to the point of like both are looking for the other thing. Cause like I got to a point where like now I'm like cool like I need the money now. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's like I want the money now, so I've got the other. I need the money now, which is like, and I think that's a journey in itself. What I think is interesting about that is I believe there are some people that have the money with the mindset. You they just don't show it. Yeah, off. yeah, and I, I agree. Like I, I think so. Like I think I just society. I kind of said it in general terms, but I think there are all kinds of people, in, you know, overall. Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. But uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean there. Like it's almost like. Um, I feel like, yeah, just to get more clarity in what you was explaining there, like, is it you're explaining the fact that it's kind of like society makes us believe it's kind of like one thing or the other? It's, no, it's, it's more, like it's more of that thing. It's like what two different people could be looking for. Like they each have that. So I've, what, I'm, what I'm interested in in life in general right now, and I'm not sure if that's something that I'm going to commit to or I'm, it's just something I'm thinking about. It's like, how can I get two people and put them together for them to exchange what they both need so if there's someone with money and they're quite sad about life and they're not happy yeah, yeah. about life but they've got the money and someone who's like so someone who's in a you know the most amazing space in life they've got appreciation they've got you know a sick mindset and all of that stuff but they need money how can i put them both together it's very hard you know why because i feel like I go back to their belief systems and their morals yeah, yeah, so yeah. that that man with money that feels super sad he, he might all women it, they might not believe that they are really actually okay I think deep down they might know that though I think I think sometimes people know it they just it's just like maybe showing it or you know I think some people know it like or they may have if they believe it, it's the expectation game isn't it if they put the expectation money on a pedestal that that brings x y and z like happiness this mm. this this power whatever um they won't ever they won't ever respect that person's level of their version of success power do you know what i mean they might just yeah. be like oh well they're just pretty chill with like shopping in audi and not having a lot and being okay with things and like that's why they're fine about the world if they come into my mind they'd know what it's like to have the problems of moving millions of pounds and mm. having that fear and worry so it's like it's an interesting one yeah. but I, I do truly believe that we have a really like again through the game of everything we've discussed already but we have got money so wrong because hundred percent money flows. It's yeah, an energy. Yeah, yeah. It literally is like water. It's hundred percent. Yeah. But the thing is, is we don't emotionally attach something to more uh, to money like or to water. Like we don't go, oh, that's my rent because yeah. it's never been my rent. Also, we're limitless of it in this country. You know, we're very privileged the way that we have water, we handle water. But it is exactly the same. We and then the thing about that is that we've all emotionally attached limitations to it or a ceiling to it Lim- limiting beliefs like people have limiting beliefs around money it's just like Massively. it's like you said money is there it's just it's about the worst it's just one, about you know? finding what value people can add to get a money and it's more about the relationship with money like i've, I've played this thing from the audio which remember that thing i played about people's relationship with money it basically goes along the lines of like it's pretending that money's having a conversation with a person and how the how the person perceives money so money saying oh like you want more of me but you don't want to, you know, like, so it's just, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I'm going to yeah, show that's you. that's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to play it to you after. It's really, I mean, that's it's a really, really cool lit, yeah. way for people to see it in a different way. Like, I'm always, always trying to look for ways, like, to help my clients mm. and explain it more and so on. Because the thing is, is that 
it's okay first of all we have to like out our own internal internal biases or limitations around it like what we've had in our lives what we haven't had in our lives yeah. but also it's like what else you'll find as you go on your journey it's funny because it's why i still have my mentor because it's like the more you grow the more development you need because the thing is is you might be happy moving hundreds of pounds like bank to bank yeah, yeah. you could be happy in the same level of that emotional fear or worry or lack moving ten thousand pounds mm. so and also as we go up you're going to be challenged more or you're going to be tested more so it's like okay you you call with hundreds are you cool with thousands but that's the now, thing but, cool with 10, but it goes back it's to the like, risk right so it's like it's like the the concept doesn't like the the action in itself doesn't change the, the thing that changes is the quantity right yeah. So it's like, but then that, if the quantity changes, doesn't that go back to the perception of how you see money, right? Because exactly. nothing's like, exactly. it's still money, we're still moving money. that's where we put an emotional attachment to it. Yeah. And that will look different for everyone. And that's the hard part of that because it's like, that's exactly it. You know, you might, and that's why I, I truly believe this. It's why a lot of people that win the lottery that get a lot of money quick, lose it quick. Because they yeah. haven't got the money mindset to understand how to use it. 100%. There's so many different cases of people that's had 100%. money. Tomorrow they got millions, then, you know, like months later really it's gone. we really want money. We don't yeah. want money. We want stuff to buy money with. Yeah. No, I got a friend, you know um, I mean? Nathan. You got friends? No, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, your friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so. Nathan, we have, um, we have a guy called Nathan coming on in a few weeks, and I was having a conversation, conversation with him yesterday. <clears throat> Essentially, we were talking about, um, you all heard about the whole thing in Dubai where people are getting shared on. Or, no. yeah, so people are getting shitted on for money in Dubai, whatever. And I spoke to him about it. I said, I what's think it, what's that's been going around for a while. It's a yeah, very, yeah. like, well, the only the version I've heard of that is that I knew somebody that worked on like billionaire, billionaire yachts oh, yeah. and they would like shit on things or around things to so just uh, people, expect yeah, the people crew getting, to pick it up. No, people are getting shitted on for money. Wow. So I asked him, What's your price? Because everyone it's has a game price. Game of power, innit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he said, uh, Yeah, I'll do it for like, I'll do it for 100 bags or 100,000 pounds. But I realized with him, because he's like he's a trader and stuff like that. For him, a hundred thousand pound isn't a hundred thousand pound. Hundred thousand pound is a million pound. Because that could be flipped. That's how they. Because if I said, oh, oh I see. So he's seeing yeah, it as like yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. channel yeah. of the energy of what he that's can like it. utilize yeah. it and convert it to. Yeah, yeah. So if, if you give me, but then the thing is, is that if you can make a million, like you, you, million, if if you're right in that concept surely ten thousand would be the same because he could yeah, go, yeah. He, if he no, no i'm not saying i'm not saying, I'm not saying like 10 a million to 100 to a million i'm not saying but i'm yeah. not saying like his hundred thousand is a million i'm saying his hundred thousand isn't hundred thousand it's more than double that yeah yeah because his mindset has always been and his financial mindset has always been it's never what you've given me because i know that i can always double its value so i guess that can also apply to a mindset of if he was to teach me something what you've taught me is never uh, its value. If I take it in, if I can digest it in a certain way, I can always double or quadruple its value. A hundred percent. Whoever, how you digest it. But then it. at that point, are you trading then? <coughs> you, that's all right. Uh, at that point, are you in trading your in integrity? Because actually, if you truly believe money is limitless and I can move it and I can play it and mm. it's my vehicle, you don't ever need money to do something mm. like that yourself. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but money, money, money can never be the end. That's the problem. Yeah. So what I was told, what I was telling to Leo uh, a couple of days ago um, is objects must always be the means to an end, and the human must be the end. So we can never have we can never have a person as the end. Like you know how you got means to an end, yeah. For me, yeah. money money would always be the means. Yeah, money 100%. can never be the end. No, it, is, it and, isn't. And 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 that applies to that's money, that's resources, that's that's absolutely whatever money things can always must always be for me the means, and people must always be the end. It can never be the opposite. We can never. I can never use people for another means. For sorry, I, I can never use people as a means for another end, because then that's kind of sacrificing and disrespecting and kind of like. I see what it's, you're saying. Bit, so like from like a yeah, I it's see also, what from like an like using that person. Point of view. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ethically, yeah. It's, mm. it's but no, that is truly that is truly it. It's like money isn't a what; it's a how. Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's a good well, point. Like that one. I've just I've just had a realization. That's the reason why I slapped the table, and it, it wasn't it wasn't because of what you were saying, by the way. Do you, know, do you know what? Do you know? Just it's like a side side thing, yeah. yeah do you know yeah. I'm really interested in? So like throughout the podcast, we get like different guests that come on all the time, mm. and like I kind of like. Obviously, he's like my little brother, so I take the piss out of him sometimes, and I. But I get really fascinated with how people are more uncomfortable with me taking the piss out of him than me. Did, 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 yep. you, did you realize that? That's that's yeah, interesting. That's, 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 that's the relationship because like that's I, so that's so interesting. I find that so interesting. What I was telling Nathan that day as well is if I asked him to close the door. Oh, if I, so if I, if I was talking to a customer, I asked him to close the door. My way of asking him is, can you close the door for me, yeah. please? 
Well, it's if I was to ask Leo to close the door, <laughs> close the door, little dickhead. Yeah, that's what definitely. But, but you know, yeah. what, you know what's interesting? But again, it's I perception think, again, isn't no, it? No, no, but yeah. I take the piss on the podcast. You take the piss off the cameras and the podcast, and you do it more than me. <laughs> so people only get to see when I do it on yeah, the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Which is, I'm but like, that's not fair. Right. But if someone, <laughs> I need to get this out there and into the air. If someone always sees it one way, what's the value? Because it is a relationship between two people. Yeah, no, of course. So essentially, we're only, we're only, we're only judging from our own judgment of ourselves. Hundred percent. So, so the thing I was going to say is that a lot of the times we talk about that we need money, right? Like we need money, we need money. Actually, I just realized that money needs us. Yeah. Like, so if money didn't have us, money wouldn't exist. Absolutely. We, we, that's it. It's like, what, what's the crypto world? We've created yeah, that. Yeah. We've created it. The, the moment we all come together collectively and go, we don't actually think this is worth fucking anything. It's not worth anything. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like Chanel. It's like brands. It's like businesses. Like we all create the supply and demand mm. of what that is. So the, the, I would argue, with, I would argue with, the only, the only thing I would argue with is like sometimes certain things, like they might be overvalued, but certain things do add value. Like for instance, like even the crypto thing or even whatever. And, and I agree with you fully. I think if less people buy into something or less people support it, it will be worth less. Worth, worth less? Worth less? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, I, I think um, it's just the whole thing of like, some things do bring value. And it's just like, and obviously it's like what you're saying, the masses will decide what it's worth, mm. you know? And it's or people game, that buy into the concept. 100%, but it's a game of coming back around to what you said. It's still perception. Yeah, yeah. Because your game of, and your idea, your perception of value is going to be different to someone else's. Ooh, but it's that thing of like, people don't buy the thing, people buy the concept. People buy the concept True. of what Gucci gives them. No, rather True. than the thing, they want the concept, right? True. So you think about what, is the, what are they Fine selling? Line. Are they selling the concept? Or are they yeah, selling, yeah. you know? Well, are they selling, no, a, are they selling a feeling, a dream, an ego? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But I think that's the fine line. And this is the game of awareness too. Because I feel mm. like that's another thing. Like, honestly, and I had my ego tested the last couple of weeks because yeah, yeah. I got, I applied for a private house in London, right? Which yeah. we probably all know what it is because it just is what it is. It's like, Soho house, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I applied for one of the houses when I got back from living in Dubai for a bit at the beginning of last year, and I got acceptedly, and I was like that mm, 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 because it's the game of money, can't yeah, buy yeah. in, and I know a lot of people, whatever. And I thought, why do you want to be in there? Mm. Why do you actually want to like? What is it, mate? Because actually, and and when I unpacked it, and as well, I'm very grateful. I'm sure it's really lovely. You know, what I mean, anyone watching, I'm sure they have a nice time in there, but. I just, I'm in a place now in my life. And again, it's not like judgment. It's not like um, there's a wrong or a right. It's just an observation for me to be my authentic yeah, 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 self yeah. and be honest with myself now, right now. I don't, I shouldn't be in there because otherwise it's coming from a place of validation. It's not from a place that I truly believe that I'm serving my purpose in it. Yeah, yeah. And so that links back into brands it links back into what we're going into those places for so for instance i'm on a waiting list to buy a watch that i've wanted for a long long time it's probably now, rolex isn't it, <laughs> it, it, it that's, is yeah. that's the only thing i think about that's on the waiting they're list they're also yeah. very freaking good at branding oh, yeah. like, jesus that game is like crazy like but that's, they, but that's that thing the scarcity thing you know like they have this this thing of like can't get it like have to be on a waiting list have to buy a rolex every year to carry on being on a waiting list but at the same time yeah. i'm not getting involved in that i mm. i appreciate the craftsmanship i think it's beautiful like i've always loved watches yeah. um there's a lot of things on my list that i would have dreamed of and wanted materialistic that isn't anymore that's yeah. still on there who knows in six months a year's time i might not even need oh, i might the love that i feel for that i might not even need that anymore but it's that fine line i think it's always about mm. us checking in with ourselves going it's okay like like we said before like we can't fight in our inspiration our passion yeah. without our shadow self so it's a great thing but it's, it's when it overtakes for validation so or insecurity i believe that the watch industry is gonna die and i have a logical belief for that it's not just me saying it the reason being is because we have newer and newer generations coming out who are adapting to technology even more they're using the technology even more and obviously there's there's these apple wristwatches there's many wristwatches that are technological right 100%. it's gonna get to the point where someone's gonna wake up in the morning from the next generation and gonna go actually I don't need this Rolex that's going to show me the time. I need this wristwatch that's going to show me how many steps I've taken today. But the value changes. How, yes, it's like... The, no, the, value, the value now changes into something that's popular to something that's retro. And the retro market is insane. Once you, once you like, the, like the old school stuff of... Because let's say, for example, muscle cars or so, so yeah. some of these old school cars, 
they are they they are very expensive to maintain. They are very bad for the environment. All these bad things, but because it has a retro value, yeah. but, uh, but, but that, that's that's what that's when it comes back to that regular console. Like, what are the needs and wants? You know, like I probably need the Apple Watch more than, and I might want the Rolex. And it's just like, what are we addressing? It's but like it's the market. That's the problem. But we we the market only serves what the people want. Exactly. If we can't hate the market, Fuck the market. Doing. I'm not in that market. Yes, you are. I'm, 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 always, am just, I? Just, as long as you're alive, you're in the market. I think it's just it's just these it's these transitions, isn't it? Because I hear what you're saying. It does definitely serve purpose. Generations are seeing things differently, but that is also we could also say that's a trend. We could also say like anything's a trend. We don't mm. know when it's going to like die out. We don't know when it's going to keep evolving. We don't know. But what we do know is that the rich do get richer, and at the minute, especially like our government and where we're sitting and the way the power is held in our government. Mm. Um, elitism is a thing still do you know what i mean so it's like unfortunately like that is a cloud of money that i always feel like will drive that economical movement and then also the amount of and this is also a business within itself you know like Mm. how like as you say because of the game of the ego the game of the person that wants it now they have impatience and they want it for maybe different reasons they are going to pay a markup to get it quicker and then yeah. therefore that creates a business. There's another econo- economical chain within yeah, it. Do you get what I mean? So um, it's like, I don't, I, I don't personally think it would be so easy to die out, but I do know what you're saying. It's like we are moving in generations where we are moving past just what a watch is now. Hey, listen, it's, it's like evolved, isn't it? I, I go to Shoreditch and I see, I see 20 year olds who are, the mindset's very different. To the regular, they don't yeah. want no Rolexes. Like obviously, there'll be some, some, some of them do. But I'm seeing like a whole different tribe of young people yeah, yeah, yeah. that are like they're like into like um, recycled clothing and all these different. Yeah. It's just like it's it's there's a whole different generation. Is yeah. the, there's the whole like Gen Z who are like all about technology, 100%. you know? It's just so like I, f- I think the world is changing. I think a lot of these things will die. Like you know, maybe not in my li- maybe not in my lifetime, yeah. but maybe in 100, 200 years yeah. and, and so on. You know? It is interesting. I feel like, I feel like what's really beautiful is I do feel like we're on the turn, like the millennial generation and like Gen X, Gen Z, like I think it's quite incredible how they have such a sense of awareness so young, but I, I do believe it's because they've been brought up with the internet. Yeah. And I 100%. believe that like we were all kind of like, as much as we, like, as a kid, I questioned everything. I was always this way. I'm sure you were too. Like, question everything. Mm. And I was, at that point, when I was that young, I was just known as the annoying kid. Do you know what I mean? I'd be like, even at school, I'd be like, well, why have we got beer at that time? And why does it, why do I mean to get that? Like, if somebody said that, then why is that, 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 and that, and that? That's why I love maths. Because it was like, there was always, like, more and more I could learn. But the thing is, is, and the thing is, is I think, um, what the internet has done is it's given space to, like, for everyone to have humility and be heard and Mm. i think it's that game as well you know like we just when you when you think about when you think about like power patriarchy when you go back hundreds and hundreds of years you start with like kings and queens and like the Mm. way they spoke you know what i mean like when we go back all the way there and we see how we've evolved it's like i believe it was like poisons were like were drunk drunk drinked drunk yeah yeah. drunk they were drunk then and it's like it's just diluted generation, 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 mm. generation. And we're almost at this tipping point where I feel like it really, really is, you know, like I believe, I believe we only went into Brexit because I believe we still hold the higher, the older generation that's still internally biased yeah. around racism. Yeah. So they might be directly not racist, but mm. there's an internal and that's, bias. And that could have been the kind of like the point of influence that that, that would influence the vote as well. That's it. And that was yeah. the fourth, fifth generation. That's because they yeah. were brought up in a war. Because their parents were brought up in the war. So it's like they saw things very, very differently and it was impactful on them. You know, like even when I have really good, honest conversations with my mum, she explains that like it was a big thing when a black family moved in the road. Mm. I mean, and that's just my mum. That's just one generation removed from me. It's like, you know, like I think about. Imagine the one before that. 100% like do you know that in the 70s like a woman actually couldn't get a mortgage on her house without a male guarantor. Wow. You know that? 70s. 70s. That's just around the corner. Literally, like, madness. Like, you know, 50 years ago. Like, yeah, this no, is what I mean. Yeah. When you when you yeah. unpack that, you're like, that's crazy. Like, do you know that in 2008, it was still legal to legally rape your wife in the UK? In the UK. Oh, fuck. And that was like when we were kids. Like, so I just feel like we are evolving. But again, when it's not your story and you don't walk in those shoes mm. every day in your life, you don't 
think about it so much or don't you're just not existing in it do you know what I mean so it's like us having these conversations and all of that Mm -hmm. like the world having conversations the world being like more exposed to one another like when you think we were kids we never had access to like 24 hours like news or we were fed by the media, which is like predominantly white owned. Which we, which we still kind of, um, I mean, um, it, we still are. Basically. We are, yeah, but yeah. at the same time, we've created this incredible internet spaces where people can yeah. be seen and heard and speak their truth to. So it's like, we, yeah. we're 100% evolving. I definitely think we're moving and progression is incredible. 100%. And, and I think technology is a big part of that. And I think it needs to happen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because we're like disgusting humans. You know what I mean? Like we've almost ruined <laughs> the world. We're not disgusting. But, but, but we've, we've some, done a, some people are disgusting. Yeah, but I, I just yeah. think, um, you know, like all this processing stuff of what we've created mm. is why we're now having to go backwards. Do you know what I mean? It's like I, I, but I, think, I think that's the thing. It's like, the, it's like, you know, what angle are we looking at? Like I used, I used to say this thing all the time, just like, you know, like we're like parasites and actually my, my, my perspective shifted. I think, I think like we, we are like wonderful beings. I think it's just more about the utilization. So how, how are we, you know, 100%. how do we exist and all of that yeah, stuff? Yeah, we, you know? I think it's just it's just the ego, isn't it? It's like sometimes it's just too much for some people, and like you know, it's like it's the whole full circle. Like for me, it's like I feel like a lot of pharmaceutical products and stuff like that. You know, they were almost created yeah. out of a place of power or money. But then that's the thing. But there's there's also so and I agree with you. But that's what I'm saying. There's always two sides to the coin. But there is that whole like study of like because of the of that industry like people have a longer life expectancy. So, so there is a whole 100%. there's so many different yeah, like yeah. ways of looking at things yeah. and just talking about Absolutely. and it's just like and and that's what I like to do. I like and to just and it's definitely get, right. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely like incredible like evolution for it in that yeah, way. Yeah. But I just think that we've been westernized to believe it's the only way. Yeah, do you yeah, get yeah, what yeah, I mean? And that's what makes yeah. me feel sad. Is that like when you again it goes to people not making questions or not questioning yeah. things and they're, they're giving their power away. So so because they'll go into like a consultation mm. room and they'll just believe the person in front of them but that person might have been really good at reciting and holding information and doing a test and now they're a doctor yeah, but yeah, actually yeah. You're, you're putting your whole existence and everything into their opinion and it's not about judging that person whether they they're great or not I just don't trust anything that's just said to me I will always and it's not about it's not about a judgment towards a person. It's the way I go about my life where I just believe. You have, you have a strategy on how you... Yeah, you, I just believe, you, you yeah. know, like we should be more open to, you know, getting more opinions or speaking yeah. to more people or looking at alternative things and not just being like caged and boxed yeah. by this one way of thinking. And, and, this, and this is why I appreciate you. I think, I think you're someone who's teaching that. And... Um, like I've, I've I've been on your Instagram as well, so I've just got a couple of questions before yeah, we wrap up. Thanks, Leo. So 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 one of, so one really of them nice. is just like going back to your Instagram. So like I've seen some really cool content, and a lot of the content will make people question things or just like learn something. So like in terms of your mindset, where did your mindset come from? I feel like our mindset is something that I personally believe we're a soul. So I believe that. Mm. I might have done other lifetimes. And so I've come into this lifetime with something that was born into me at a very young age. Before, yeah. That like I'm meant to do in this lifetime. I'm meant to help move this movement forward. So I don't know if something else happened to me in a different lifetime that leads that onto this. Because I know from such a young age, I questioned everything. Always. I used to question stuff. Yeah. Um, so I feel like mindset starts it's like part of our soul and it's it's getting more connected back to it mm-hmm. and like having working on your mind all the time to have the awareness and to ground yourself for patterns of belief and safety so we're working in that third level of mindset we're not in the second the second is when we're in that high achiever mode we're in lack we're in force we're in panic we're in worry we're in scarcity third is when we're aligned it's like alignment it's like empowerment it's safety it's calmness um you're you're working out of a place of knowing you're not working out of a place of fear um and so for me my mindset has evolved as i've honored that more and more um, I love learning so I learn I try and learn all the time I can, and I so can tell <laughs> yeah I really do yeah. but I think also it's really important for us to and my mentor always says this to me like bring it back to yourself too and look inside at your own wisdom you know we're all so intuitive we're all so wise for different things 
And I just believe that we all do have a purpose. Mm. I believe that we are here for something. It's just how much we want to honour it, how much we want to open up to it. It could be really fearful because it might mean that you've got to make money in a different way and that could feel quite scary. It could be that you've got to then face the fear of rejection, the fear of failure. Um, yeah, it could be that you just got to like own something that like your friends and family wouldn't know you for and that mm. there's fear around that. So... I think we've all got it. It's just whether you want to step into it or not. And, yeah, and then I think that's it really. But I, I think purpose is about giving, being part of something that's bigger than you. Yeah, yeah I love that. I yeah. love that. That's a beautiful good. way of describing it. Um, I'm going to let Aladdin ask, actually before we do the final question, is there anything you want, you want to promote? So if you have a community that we try oh, to connect people with beautiful. so if there's anything you want to yeah I mean um for sure like always come over or come on my page like have a chat like I would love to like at the minute I'm just really focusing on building a community that um connect to the things I say connect to the things that I believe in to just help more you know mm. like my mission is to help 10 million women find their purpose and live it authentically love it understanding that like we are limitless and we can have a life of full full wealth mm. like in every aspect that we believe that we want um and to believe that we can so I'm gonna, I'm gonna connect you with someone after I'll, I'll give you some amazing yeah. thank you and so yeah so anybody that feels resonating to that come on over um and yeah and I do business mentor clients one-to-one -one. so um I'm always yeah uh, the universe sends me people in crazy ways, but as we know, that's how it works. That's when you're it works, yeah. fully in that feminine, in that third, well, the balance of feminine and masculinity, and like we surrender, we just trust, and we're in that third level of mindset, and mm. we're just in a place of knowing. It just f allows things to move freely. So, um, so yeah, so if anyone feels connected to that, drop me a message and we'll, um, yeah, just have a conversation. Cool. See and we'll, we'll put your Instagram in, in the description Thanks, as well. Thanks, Leo. Direction, I'll put your Instagram in so, the description. Huh? <laughs> Correction, I will put you in the screen. Alright, okay, <laughs> okay it. then. Alright. Oh shit, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. You can shit. put like a little high five um, next to since, it. Since yeah. you spoke, then do you want to ask the final question then? Um yeah. Before we did actually, yeah, there's a, we got a funny DM from a friend of ours. Yeah. Uh, she just said, Alison, oh. um, we need to re we need refillable glass bottles. These Highland spring bottles are not the one. Oh. I know. Do you know what? Isn't that yeah. a tough one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh love, yeah. We should uh get shout, shout out to Alison. Yeah, thanks, Alison. Do you know what? Do you know what I sometimes Alison. say? Like, I've got one purpose already. I can't. I can't help the whole world. I've got a lot to do. Yeah, yeah, but Ooh. we're really grateful for people that are, you know what I mean, helping mm. for that. Yeah, so yeah. we will support that. Yeah, for sure. Hundred percent. We, we can. We can get a branded ones as well. What branded ones? BTS or not? Well, sure, yeah, final question because I'm, okay. I'm gonna have to run off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's all it's good. Um, yeah, quickly. Uh, quick question. No, quick question. <laughs> Let me run that one more time. Run it, um, run it, run it. So same question we ask everyone. Um, take your time to answer it, if you want. You have one opportunity to say one thing to 7.8 billion people. What are you going to say? Trust in yourself. Mm. Mm. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to expand, expand on it, or are you leaving it at that? Nah, because I just feel like people will get confused and there'll just be too much information. And do you know what it is? So sometimes sometimes <laughs> that there's that thing of less is, is more is. sometimes, you know? Uh, yeah, and yeah. I just, uh, you know, I could really expand and go, look, self-belief, because that will make you more money if you believe in that and believe in that and stop doing that. And like, don't go into status quo, blah, 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 and challenge that and mm. you are more and all these things. And But really, it just comes back to trusting in ourselves. Like, mm. we, we truly do have the answers. Yeah, yeah. And it sounds so corny, like... But we really, really do, especially if you if you can be that honest with yourself in a state of meditation, mm -hmm. you'll find it. You'll find the answers if you really want the answers of why you do things, mm -hmm. why you feel like you can't move forward with things, why things trigger you, why th things make you react in a certain way. It's in there. It's just whether you want yeah. to be vulnerable enough to find it and to work on it. Mm -hmm. You've got yeah. to trust in yourself. Love it. And there's that thing of like when you over specify things, sometimes it takes away the opportunity to kind of understand a thing through their own lens as well. hundred percent. Um, so I just want to say like, I've got so much gratitude for you being here. I've got Thank gratitude you. to the universe for connecting us. Same. And this conversation is a little bit like going like, how come it took so long to make this conversation happen? So, you know, like the, the, the conversation is talking to us as well at the same time. Absolutely. As philosophical as it might sound. No, I um, think that's right. And I think it, it took the time that it took because this was a divine moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
But yeah, thank, thank you, so thank you, me. thank you for being on here. Pleasure. I do this thing of like the music's gonna start playing now. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you chose them, man. Yeah? No, it's yeah. my pleasure, yeah. honestly. Thank you so much. It's really been a pleasure.